Hey there! Welcome back to Shavings and Cravings. I'm uh, finally going to get around to playing finish to my mantle project. Uh, if you enjoy this project, make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and uh, hit that little bell icon, as everybody says, to get notified when I post another one of my riveting videos. Uh, for this mantle, I'm going to be using the Armor All, or the General Finishes Armor All Gloss. Um, I got a gallon jug of it because I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to need. Uh, I think Woodcraft actually had it for the best price uh, that I could find. Rockler was pretty close. Uh, so I ran to the local Woodcraft and picked it up before the whole shutdown. Um, so we're going to be using that. It's a wipe on finish. We'll just wipe it on uh, fairly lightly and we'll wipe off the excess and uh, we'll let it dry and then lightly sand and reapply. For that, I'm going to use a tack cloth, go over it to get all the dust off that's settled in the week or so that it's been sitting down here, and we will get started. So let me get this tack cloth going and uh, then we'll start to apply some finish. To start, because uh, I got the gallon jug, I'm going to be using just a cup pour it into. Uh, I've gone ahead and shaken this quite well according to the instructions and uh, hopefully it's mixed up enough. I'm going to pour some of that in there. It's pretty thin stuff. It's already formulated to level out so you don't have to thin it any more than it already is. Specifically, it says not to thin. Uh, and so we're going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a blue towel, blue shop cloth. I'm going to fold it up into like a little applicator pad, kind of in thirds, and then into thirds again. I think it's actually two towels, but make it into a little applicator type pad. What we're going to do is we're going to soak that in this and just kind of wipe it in. This first coat is going to soak up quite a bit uh, into the different kind of grains. And so as it goes, if one part is getting drier than another, we'll probably apply a little bit more. First coat's not as critical on getting an even, super flat finish because it's going to soak into the wood. So we'll just start by dipping that in there and wiping it on. Yeah, you can see it's just kind of sopping it up. So we're going to apply pretty liberally here. They say light coats, but the first coat's definitely going to soak in. Sure looks nice already. Can't wait to see it finished. And this edge is definitely one of the least critical parts. We're just applying and then after we apply and get it all pretty much the same, if there's any parts that are too saturated, if there's a puddle or something, you can just very lightly, hardly any pressure, drag it across to sop up the excess. And you can also apply this with a brush, apparently. Again, I haven't done it with this product. But they do say you can use a brush, uh, a sponge, an old t-shirt that's wrapped up, a paint applicator, all different kind of options. 
wipe on finishes are pretty easy. Cats come to visit. I think we finally came up with a name for her. One of my friends uh, from work posted it one day and I kind of liked it and we started calling her uh, Excelsior or X for short, because the definition of Excelsior is uh, fine curled wood shavings uh, used pretty much for packing delicate items, but I figured for a name like Excelsior that meant wood shavings, pretty good fitting for a shop cat, I would think, so we're going to go with that. She still likes to hang around the garage quite a bit, especially likes that we feed her. We went to Mississippi to my mother-in-law's last week. We came back and there was a dead bird just outside the garage and there were remnants of that same bird, feathers and whatnot, on the other maple slab that I have sitting in my garage stall and I think with us without us feeding her that week she got a little wild again and had to go and forage for her own food and decided that a finch or something was a rather tasty treat I've been trying to keep her fed so she doesn't do that because I kind of like our birds that hang around our area we feed them and put bird houses and out, out and whatnot so hopefully if I keep her fed on friskies or whatever she's eating she will leave the local wildlife alone more and focus on that so you can see this grain right here is really soaking up that finish so I'm gonna apply a little bit extra there just to make it so that it's pretty uniform across there's some right there as well that's soaking it up. Again, not imperative because this part won't even be seen, but just trying to get an idea how the other side's going to behave. Good morning. Uh, time has passed and it's dry, so what I'm going to take is uh, 500 grit sandpaper. You can do up to four or down to 400. And I'm just going to lightly sand the whole surface to make it nice and soft and take off some of the tall bits of the wood and we'll leave it with a smoother surface for the next coat of finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick and then we'll put down the next coat. Okay, got done sanding. Now I'm gonna take a, ramp, uh, a rag damp with mineral spirits and I'm just going to get that dust off of there. Got that dust all cleaned up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, repeat. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and sand this again. This time I'm going to use about a, is it a quadruple hot steel wool and just going to go over it and then we're going to do another coat. Process. We're gonna scuff it up with the steel wool, 
Put another coat down. Fourth coat on the bottom. I think this will be the last coat for the bottom because I'm not as concerned with it being perfect. Um, but for this coat, I'm going to just be coating the middle four feet or so that will be exposed. The other parts have enough finish underneath to uh, keep it protected, but I definitely want at least one more coat on the bottom of this part. And then I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna start the top. But before that, steel wool, more finish. Excellent. So the middle section here is looking really good. I think I'm going to stick with that for the number of coats. Uh, that was four on the bottom right here. So what now I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to place a couple blocks on either side on the place that I don't really care about. Um, and we'll start working on the top, which is going to be awesome. I'm just placing the blocks underneath it so that the finish, that it's not fully cured, won't be marred anyway in the middle. And again, I don't really care about this third and that third because it will be hidden. this. Alright. Process is going to be the same. I'm going to tack cloth it, get all the dust off of it, and then we're going to apply the finish. The front, I may have to use a brush. I'm going to try the rag first but I might have to use a brush to get into some of these uh, little nooks and crannies, but after the first coat, I'll see how it looks and decide if I want to change tactics. Mm. Some of these wormholes might actually be best to start with a brush. Tack claw, tack it down. and it's looking pretty good. There's one area right here in this knot that just is sucking up that finish. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more right there in particular. Uh, again, steel wool, and we're gonna scuff it up and do about probably four or five more coats. That's gonna be a very repetitive process, so I'm just gonna whip through it without narrating, hopefully. And, uh, see you on the other side of the time lapse. Time -lapse. After the finish cured, I had to enlist the help of my neighbor and my stepson to help carry the slab in and uh, put it on top of the built-in cabinets that I had made previously. You can see here us uh, struggling to move this gigantic piece into place. It weighed a lot more than I remembered it being, but we managed uh, and slid it on top of the two built-in cabinets. I had already previously run the wires that I wanted to go between the two sides, like my speaker wires, through the wall and across. Once the slab was on top, I drilled two holes in the middle and two holes on each side of the cabinets. Um, 
this holds a pilot hole that's allowing me to figure out exactly where I'm going to drill the larger hole into the slab to put a threaded insert into. I didn't want to drill the holes on the slab and then have to try to align that with the cabinet. It was easier to drill through them in place like this. So using a tiny, I think it was like a 16th or an 8th inch bit, I just pushed up through the top of the cabinet and into the slab. And repeating on the end caps over there. Pretty sure I had bedhead in this video. I guess I should have, you know, dolled myself up a little bit. But you get what you get. Uh, these cabinets were really cool. I uh, put some lifty arms on them so that I can get to my uh, record player and whatnot on the one side. But once that was drilled, I used my strength to tilt the slab up and not push it into my TV that was right above it. Uh, glad I looked before I pushed it up pretty fast because I believe I got pretty close. And once it was tilted up, I switched to the drill bit size specified by the threaded insert that I had picked. I don't recall exactly which size it was. But with a larger drill bit, I found that pilot hole and so very carefully and precisely drilled the hole using my hand drill on this tipsy-turvy slab. I think the squinty eyes help when you try to do it. So either use that or stick your tongue out of your mouth while you're drilling the hole. It'll help it make it straight. And once that hole was drilled, I went and repeated the process on the other seven holes. Once your holes are drilled, you're going to grab your threaded inserts like that. And using a hex key, you're going to thread them into the hole. I used a T-handle with a hex key bit inserted into it, and it made it a lot easier to twist and get some more leverage on it and twist it faster. If my gigantic mitts would get out of the way, you could see what I'm doing. But all I'm doing is very slowly threading that insert in, and uh, you're gonna, your goal is to try to make it as flush as you can with the surface of your board. And you can see the T-handle right there. These threaded inserts are pretty handy. They allow you to um, screw like a bolt into a wooden surface, and it will hold it and it won't strip out. Uh, this is the first time using them, but so far I'm impressed, and I'll probably use them. Oh, don't drop the handle, Matt. That's great. Oh, sweet. All right, put it back in there. Good job. All right, like I said, I'll probably be using these in some more projects in the future. I think I ordered about a 150-piece set off of Amazon, and it was only about 20 bucks, I think, for all the threaded inserts. So I'm sure I'll have to find some more projects to use them on, otherwise I'll have a surplus. Oh, there you go. So it's nice and flush. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the slab back down carefully, and I'm going to line those holes with the other holes that I had drilled previously. I had already made them uh, just as large as I needed to. I think they were quarter-inch bolts, so I think I drilled quarter-inch holes. But pushed the slab up, made sure it was nice and aligned, and then what I would do is grab a uh, quarter-inch 20 bolt and a washer, and I would thread each bolt into each of the threaded inserts. I think I started at the middle and worked my way out. And I didn't tighten them down all the way, so it allowed me to have a little bit of wiggle room. It worked pretty well. Um, in the future, I don't know exactly how I would improve this mounting. It's very sturdy. It's not going to go anywhere. But there's a, uh, there's a picture of the bolts going through the top of the cabinet. And this is the part that I was waiting months for. Um, this is the final product. It looks beautiful. I do need to do something on the side there where it wasn't quite long enough. I'm thinking a shelf of some kind. But the overall mantle turned out better than I could have ever expected. The grain on this hickory slab is amazing. Um, it's, it's awesome. These are some gratuitous shots with my new gimbal that I was just trying out. So apologies if the cinematography isn't great, but kind of gives you an overall swooping look.
And to give you an idea of what it looked like before, here's a picture. Uh, we just had a couple Ikea shelves for DVDs and an Ikea bookshelf that held all our books. And so we replaced that with uh, the built-ins that I wanted to do. So it gave all the storage for all the books and all of the DVDs, as well as the PlayStations and uh, my record player, which is over there on the right. So here's the after, and you can see um, just how good it looks, at least in my opinion. I built those built-ins. Uh, using plywood and I got some glass from a local supplier that's just down the road and I'm really pleased with how they turned out uh, here's a side-by-side -side, just for comparison's sake and here's a view from above um, I think that the upstairs view down is the best because you can see that beautiful grain the live edge is great because it has all the different wormholes and whatnot but Man, do I love that grain on that wood. I would like to thank you for joining me on this journey of watching me craft this. Uh, this is my first YouTube series, so thank you very much for bearing with me as I learn this editing and this recording, and uh, it's only bound to get better. So I think we've all deserved a nice drink to end this series with, as I've done with every single video in this one. So, without further ado, to the kitchen. All right, it's time to mix up a drink. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna do whiskey sour. And uh, I got this recipe from the bartender at Chattanooga Whiskey's Experimental Distillery downtown. It's awesome. If you ever have a chance to go to a tour there, I would highly recommend it. Uh, but for this recipe, we'll need some whiskey. Uh, I'm gonna use Chattanooga Whiskey's uh, Tennessee High Malt, just 91 proof, really good whiskey. Also can't be too safe, gotta have to keep its vest on. Uh, we need some lemon juice, some simple syrup, and a cherry for a garnish if you want it. Um, first you're gonna need two and a half ounces of whiskey, sounds like a lot, uh, but with the amount of lemon juice that's in there it ends up being pretty good. So. Call that good. Then you need an ounce of lemon juice. Ounce of simple syrup. Some ice. Finger stir. Cherry. Enjoy. Man, that's good. <laughs>